You served, your opponents returned. Now what? Should you drive? Should you drop? Maybe lob? That's what we're going to find out. Pickleball lovers, don't forget to have a good day. The third shot is the most important shot in all love pickleball, but how do we make the right decision? When do we drop? When do we drive? What about a third shot lob? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's learn right now. Of course, there's many factors that will affect your choice. Number one, is the return deep? Number two, does it have spin? Number three, which way? Dylan Frazier. If I was Dylan, the factors influencing whether I drive, drop, or lob would be this. Deep return in favor of driving. Not much spin in favor of dropping. It's windy and it is a wiffle ball he's hitting. So that is the deciding factor. And look what an easier fifth shot drop he got right in the wind if you are drive dropping i would advise a third shot drive at 60 to 80 percent followed by a fifth shot drop a lot closer in the court hit it high lots of spin number four how high is the ball number five where is your opponent on the court are they at the kitchen already or are they still back and number six how well does your opponent handle drives do they have really fast reaction times do they have a good overhead should i lob them more Dylan Frazier sets up for a third shot. What's he going to hit? Look at that arrow. Both players on the opposite side are somewhat set, right? Not worth driving. And honestly, I watched and filmed this whole game live, and I would say he doesn't have to drive. He won most of the dinking battles in this game. That's what I'm saying. I know. However, when you get this short ball, you have to drive. Percentages dictate it. So if you get a short ball in the court that's higher than your knee, I would drive it all day long. Seriously. Unless, well, let me keep going. Number seven has to do with you. How comfortable do you feel driving, dropping, what is your specialty? Which way is the wind blowing? I know, it sounds really complicated. I meant to make it sound that way. Let's simplify it right now. What would you do with this third shot? What would I do? I would drive it all day long. Why? It's windy, number one. It's a deep return. It would be a tough third shot drop. Honestly, she should have just hit it less hard to Dylan Frazier because he handles speed so well. This is me and my opponents are hidden out balls. If your opponents are hidden out balls, drive all day, even on Sunday. You could tell your parents. One more thing, when you drive down that line, your opponents don't have much time to decide whether they're gonna hit it or not, so they're gonna hit it a lot. And that's why I got beat really bad by Joey Farris, because we hit out balls all day long and made them look really good when they're already really, really good. If it's higher than your shoulder, let it fly. If it's higher than your shoulder, let it fly. Say it with me right now. I know. On the third shot, there's some cases when you actually have to drive. Here's one. If your opponent's return short and it bounces high, you're up in the court, take that drive. Probability-wise, you're going to win the point. And if you don't take that drive, you're really letting your opponents off the hook. You really are. Don't hit short returns in tournaments. Even Dylan Frazier, and he's highlighted fastest hands in the game, but he still can't defend that. I know. Another occasion to drive is when your opponents don't quite get to that kitchen area. We can drive it at that feet. We get to the kitchen and we spike it. I love it. If you hit a really good drive and it draws a pop-up, is your partner going to be that to shake and bake? Are they going to be pinch in middle to put it away? Because if not, it's a wasted drive. If you're a really good driver, make sure you have a partner that can shake and bake like that. That's shake and bake. He's pinching middle the pink. That's what it means. He's pinching middle right on that kitchen line. If you're a really good driver, get someone that can shake and bake and pinch middle for you. This is a really good time to drive because the opponents are not at the kitchen, right? Hit it at their feet get a pop-up. Maybe your opponent will even shake and bake. Did you find one yet? I really hope you did. Joking aside, it is so frustrating when you hit a really good drive and your partner is not that to put it away. So those are two situations where you definitely should drive. What are some other times you might drive? One, the return came back really deep and you don't quite feel comfortable with that third shot drop. I would drive that at 80%, especially if that ball has spin and then drop that fifth shot. This was such a good return to the backhand, right? Ball is deep, 
Opponents are somewhat at the kitchen. I would drive at the weaker player's backhand to get an easier fifth shot drop. Don't complicate things. Don't try for too much, 60%. That's a situation, and look at this situation. That's me doing the tango, being creepy, creeping up on the court, then I have to go back, don't do this. Two, your opponents can't handle your drives. It's too fast, it's dipping too much, they don't have the reaction times, so drive it all day long, and it would help if your partner supported you by shaking bacon. So tell them, if the wind is in my face at a tournament, I drive with heavy spin, all day long it dips a lot against the wind has less chance to go out because the wind's blowing the opposite way and that third shot drop into the wind is very difficult so drive that third shot to get an easier fifth shot drop another time to drive is if your opponents are hitting out balls balls above that shoulder if it's high let it fly but if they're doing it drive it all day long don't hit out balls i showed you that earlier but take a look at this point it's a really good example of driving at the weaker player's backhand his partner is being proactive by shaking bacon you get your opponents to change shots they miss shots it works i would suggest in rec play to try to shake and bake more try to become more dynamic now let me ask you another question when should you drop one if that return is shallow in the court you run into it it's below your knee don't drive that. I would just drop it. You just don't have time. It's not high enough. Two, if your opponents are really good at handling drives, you probably should drop. We addressed that already. If they return with that crazy angle out wide, I would drop to give yourself time to get back in the point. I believe it's reckless to drive in this situation. In this example, the return was hit out wide. I would not suggest to drive in this situation. Drop to get back in the point. It's low percentage to drive. That's exactly what she does. She's a pro. And you see a lot of 3-5 and 4-0 players try to drive that. They get nervous, right? I do sometimes. I know. I'm just a minute. Some other factors which also should be taken into the equation, whether you drive or drop, is the wind. Some people prefer to drive with the wind. Sometimes it's different. It's what you like, to be honest. As you get better, you'll realize your opponents will really punish you for bad drops, even missed by a small margin. So lots of times a really roll that forehand and backhand. I would suggest to drop low to that backhand. Easier said than done, I know. Watch this point. Look at BJ. He's in the top left-hand corner. I think he's 6'7". He's really nice, but he does have really long arms. If you miss your drop by even a small margin, he might do this, right? I know. This is John Sperling, world-renowned coach John Sperling, top right-hand corner. His drop was not perfect, but he did get it to the backhand, so they didn't quite put it away. If he dropped in the middle, they might have really crushed that forehand. So think about it. Drop into that backhand when your opponents are attacking is a good play. This is such a good drop, right? And it causes an error from Brandon Hutchman, an awesome player. But if you hit with a lot of topspin with that drop, it works. And here is an example of what I'm talking about. This is Mark Napotovich in the blue shirt, top right-hand corner. He makes the drop pay. It wasn't a bad drop. Take a look in slow motion. However, if you know Mark's game, hit his backhand, right? You have to know your opponents. You often hear the third shot lob is for lower level players, 4-0 and below. AJ Kohler is a pro. He hits that shot. With the new paddles, you can get mad spin. It is an offensive weapon. Of course, it can't be used for third shot drop or third shot drive replacement. However, if used sporadically, it can drive your opponents crazy and will cause major psychological damage on your opponents. I love my producer. In this situation, I would not have done a third shot drop. I believe a third shot lob, yes, I said lob, would have done well. Why? Because both opponents are already at the kitchen, plus they're playing against the wind. She can throw that lob up, and it only has a small chance of going out. This is a good lob, right? Get out of trouble, lob to get an easier fifth shot drop. This is not a topspin lob. We get into that. Hold on. This is a defensive lob, right? It doesn't have topspin. This is starting to get a little more offensive. Ed Perez throws up a lob. Third shot, topspin lob. You see it a lot more in the pros today. You really do. And this is a heck of a point. I just had to put this whole point out. I love it so much. This is an example of a really offensive topspin lob that markets all the time. And I don't play with him anymore. 
I might play with them tonight. Just wanted to throw this whole point out because I like watching pickleball, but it's effective, right? It's an offensive shot. It has topspin. Let's see it one more time in slow motion. He really brushes up on that ball. And Emily really makes a phenomenal play just to get that back. She might play pro, but most people couldn't even get that back. The most effective topspin lob is one brushed up quickly. It's called an offensive third shot lob and it really messes with your opponents because it has so much spin, it comes down so quickly, and it requires extra effort to hit it, so I tried an erect play court near you today. I love it. When to use this shot? I would say if your opponents do not have a good overhead, it'd be a great time to use this shot, and you might be surprised. Most 4-5 players don't have the best overhead. Some really do. It depends what sport they come from. Volleyball, tennis, will. Another offensive third shot topspin lob by Mark Napotovic and look at Eric Onsens. He's a tennis player, a collegiate tennis player. His dad was a pro and even he has trouble hand on it. I know his partner caused confusion, but isn't that what third shot lobs are supposed to do? Get your opponents frustrated, off balance, and if you're really down, in a tournament, I would suggest to throw up some lobs into the sun or against the wind. You can do it with the wind. I just don't like to do it. Personal preference. Different strokes for different folks. So if you're really struggling in the dinking battle, you're driving and they're using your power against you, I would suggest the third shot lob to change the dynamics of the match and cause mental trauma on your opponents. I'm just saying they're going to get really frustrated. I don't even play with Mark Napotovich anymore. He lobs all the time. It's so annoying. If you're playing against the wind, I would suggest that third shot lob. A lot tougher for that ball to go out. It'll come down a lot quicker. These are all examples of drive, drops, or lobs. You should never miss that drive in the net. Always clear it by a foot, right? Good drop. Nice drive, drive, drop. I like it. Beautiful drive. Drive that short ball. Another short ball, drive that. At the higher levels, it's very tough to win without getting to the kitchen, right? So why don't we just drop and get this party started? <laughs> this is a bad drive by Dylan. Drove right at the forehand. It's a left-handed player. He got confused. Don't do that. Here is the most important thing in pickleball other than the third shot drop. Don't hit out balls. This example, Dylan has a very nice drop to get to the kitchen to win the Dinkin battle. So keep that in mind. You'll win a lot of free points on your drive, but as you progress, you have to win the Dinkin battle. When not to lob, if you're playing a volleyball player, someone really athletic, you just know not to lob even if you're really good at it. If it's really gusty at a tournament, I don't lob a ton because it is a wiffle ball we are playing with and it can go out easily. If you like the lob idea but don't quite know how to lob, I would check this video out. It's so good, but let me ask you a question. When do you drive? When do you drop? When do you lob on the third shot? Pickleball lovers, thanks so much for watching. So grateful and don't forget to have a good day.